Hi, I'm Bo with Dodson Arms Co. Earlier today, while we were in the shop working, we were watching a video put out by uh, Corey and Erica, Range Time. And uh, we engaged in a little of the uh, conversation on there where they were discussing hand position and hand grip. And uh, we received a lot of negative comments and saw that people were getting beat up by, you know, haters and commenters and stuff. The, t the system that's taught with the overhand grip is a special purpose system designed for a limited number of platforms and limited scenarios. So the question is, should you commit to muscle memory something that is special purpose or should you, you utilize a conventional hand grip committed to muscle memory which is transferable to 98% of the weapons found in the world. My position is you should commit to muscle memory a basic system of using weapons. That way no matter what you pick up you can use it without a lot of thought in the process of how to handle and grip it. So what we'll do since in their video they started with a uh, Mark 18, we uh, have a Mark 18 in our inventory and it's uh, currently equipped with a uh, Yankee Hill sound suppressor. So we'll take that off so you can get a better look at the system. We're equipped with a uh, Yankee Hill, uh, it is equipped with a Yankee Hill quick coupler is a flash hider. We really like this. It's got the sharpened tips so you can use it as an edge weapon in lieu of a bayonet. You can do some, you know, probing and push uh, people out of the way and so forth with it. Now, this weapon system and the technique that we were discussing that they were showing on range time involves a high grip. Now, one variation of high grip has the thumb up here on the top the other variation rolls a hand further over to try to give more support and full automatic fire and rapid fire and to drive the weapon. This platform with the rail assembly here is ideally suited to that. And it's a good application for this technique, whereas other weapon systems are not. And one of the main reasons being, when you look at this gun, the gas block is right here. So if you had a conventional handguard system on here, it would end in this area right here. And where you would have your hand placement would be directly on the sight block where the gas is coming off. So if you were firing this gun to any extent, it would take skin off your hands. There's no way you could hold it there in this position. But having a rail mount makes that a useful system to employ. This is an older XM177 variant. And on this one, what we did is we replaced the regular hand guards with the aluminum match guard because the problem we were having is we were having a lot of overheating issues where we couldn't put our hand on it with a conventional grip. Now, when we assume the grip with the thumb on the top position, you can see how close that is to that gas block. If your hand slips forward, it takes skin off your hand, you can get a third degree burn. If you roll your hand further up, you're right at the end of the guard and in proximity to the gas block. So you would have to consciously make an effort to keep your hand back. But it is acceptable in this weapon to use it. You just have to exercise caution with the gas block. Now, if your hand slips forward, it's going to burn it very bad. Here we have the 9mm variant of the system. This one is equipped with a Yankee Hill sound suppressor also. Now, on this gun, this is a sight block. It, it serves no function as a gas block. This is a blowback operated weapon because it's in 9mm. Therefore, you're not going to get the heating of this that you would on a 5.56 weapon system. So again, the top, the thumb up 
or the hand rolled over would be perfectly acceptable on this gun, provided you keep your fingers back from the barrel assembly here. This is a variation of the M16. This one is equipped with the HK M320 grenade launcher, 40 millimeter. And on this one, as you can see, the sighting assembly here precludes the overhand grip. This sight assembly is relocatable to the other side over here. So if you did that, it would still be in the way. So you couldn't use that technique on this particular weapon. But if you use the standard hand down technique, you can always find an underneath grip here. Now, on our channel, we have a lot of viewers that are in Eastern Europe, Russia, and the Third World. Approximately half of our viewers are in the rest of the world and somewhere around 48% are in the United States. So we cover a lot of foreign weapons and weapon employment. We didn't want to leave our friends out, so we have several variations of the Kryn here, AKSU. The one in the rear has a standard muzzle brake flash hider. The one in the front here has a HEMS detachable suppressor on it. Comes off, screws on. Now, on these guns, your two main issues with the upward hand position is number one, it obscures the sights on the gun. Number two, you burn your hand. Number three, we don't think it helps with recoil control like people say it does. On a 5.56 or a 5.45 millimeter weapon, it works pretty well. Once you move up to a 7.62 NATO, then you don't see the improvement in control. But as you can see here, with this thumb placement, we're right at the sight line. So when you're sighting through the gun, you can't see the sights and aim at the target. They're totally obscured. If you roll the hand up, the situation is even worse. Now at the end of the weapon, it's very easy for the hand to slide off on the suppressor, the gas block, all up in this area. So you, and then on the rear of the gun, this area in here gets hot also when you're firing because it's a trunnion block. So you have on this gun by design a very limited gripping area anyway. So we, we pretend that, you know, the conventional grip is the best for this gun with the thumb rolled down. That way you don't obscure the sighting and your hands are out of the way. With the upper grip, you, you actually can lose control of this weapon. So we don't recommend its use. Most of the uh, positive comments we saw in the discussion centered around the use of the overhand grip forearm technique as a uh, close, close quarter battle technique only. And as we said before on the, uh, the rail mount systems, it works really well. But it's, it's CQB for sawed off shotguns, short barrel shotguns, submachine guns, it is problematic. This is a sawed off single barrel shotgun. With the upper hand grip like this, your hand is restly, resting directly on the barrel. After a couple rounds, you can get burnt, can't hold the grip. The secondary issue is you're right here at the muzzle, it's very easy to slide off and blow your hand off. Here's another look, sawed off double barrel. Same issue here. Obscured sight plane, hand in dangerous position, loss of positive grip. This was a close assault shotgun we worked on 20 years ago. Nine inch barrel, three inch mag with heat shield. With a heat shield on, you could grip the weapon that way. The problem is it's pump action. You can't work it that way. So in general, pump actions preclude the use of that technique. This is the short barrel Remington 1148 we used in the 16 gauge slug versus the block wall video. This gun can't be used with that technique at all. As you can see here, this gun uses a recoil and barrel assembly. So any position of the hand in the upward area here will hinder barrel recoil, which will cause malfunctions on the gun. The other thing is in filming that video, I fired 20 rounds of uh, 16 gauge slug through this particular gun. 
and the barrel was still hot to the touch 40 minutes after we stopped filming the video it was around 100 degrees that day and we put those slugs through this gun in about uh, five minutes so the residual heating was pretty severe and as I said your main issue with this technique if this is your primary technique and you commit it to muscle memory you will without thinking place your hand on the weapon like you've been trained to when you're under stress and a good example of this in my own life I use 1911s extensively for over 30 years and as we're pictured right here we have a Makarov that sounds suppressed which I use quite a bit this one has a heel magazine release down here but I have used the 1911 so much and have committed to muscle memory where the magazine ejector button is that when I shoot this gun in some of my P38s I subconsciously reach up here and I'm push find myself pushing a magazine release when it's actually down here so the point of that is you want to commit a general purpose technique to muscle memory and then when you're utilizing weapons you want to utilize a family of weapons where the controls are located in the same place that way you're not spending time searching for controls here we have a Remington model 58 gas operated shotgun short barrel this one you don't have the recoil and barrel issue that you did with the 1148 but you still have the same problem with the overhand grip you obscure your sight line and you're going to burn your hands. Winchester model 1420 gauge short barrel shotgun. Same issue. Hand grip, burnt hand, obscured sight line. This is not a CQB technique you want to use. Now in following with the discussion of the overhand grip technique being used as a close quarter battle, we want to look at submachine guns next. What we're going to do is start with a first generation submachine gun. This is a MP28-2 9mm. This one, as you can see, you can't assume the overhand grip. Now, if you're going to do the overhand grip, thumb up or over, it gives you a good stable weapon platform position, but it obscures the sights. So you would have to fire only by instinctive technique. This is a Madison M50 submachine gun. Prevalent use Central America, Africa, Asia. Very prolific. Used a lot by CIA. These were pretty much untraceable. As you can see here, this weapon is equipped with a grip safety right here. That must be pushed in for the weapon to operate. The only way that you can operate this weapon is to hold it this way unless you tape the safety. If you tape the safety, the problem is you don't have enough grip surface up here. This barrel gets super hot. You don't have a full length shroud on this gun. The later model 1953 did feature a full length shroud so you could hold the position here. Another issue, top operating bolt handle. This precludes holding the gun up here. So if you had a similar gun like this that had a top operating handle regardless of the grip safety you couldn't grip it up here. That's an issue with the Uzi submachine gun. Stand Mark II. This gun has the same features. You can do an overhand grip here. The problem is, as you can see, you're right at the end of the barrel. Now this one, granted, does have a short barrel for a suppressor. The normal barrel comes about another two inches. But you can see your hands on is right here close to the end and it can slip off. So regardless of the shooting position you use on this gun, you can blow your hand off. But when you go to the, the thumb up or the overhand, you obscure the, you do obscure the sights, so you can't see the target. The Stand Mark III, it has a full length receiver, covers the barrel. It is more friendly to the overhand technique. Because you can see up here, you can put the technique on it. But as I said before, if you're at 10, 12 feet, 10 yards, you can shoot it instinctively and hit, hit somebody with it. But 
Unless you use an underhand grip, you can't see the sights on this gun either. This is a third generation submachine gun. This one is a Star MPI 69. This one, if you use the overhand grip, you obscure the front sight. There's not enough room on the end here to hold it. So this one pretty much dictates you use an underhand posture. Now we've already looked at the fourth generation submachine gun, the earlier Colt 9mm, which was built on the AR frame. What we'll do next is look at suppressed weapons. Some suppressed weapons can be successfully used with the overhand technique. Integrally suppressed weapons are not one of them. If you have detachable cans, then it's, it's permissible that that technique will work really well. This particular can is permanently attached, but you can see here the presence of the can raises a sight line, so iron sights are not usable in their original form. So if you added high-rise iron sights or a high-mounted scope, then this hand position would actually work really well in CQB. And you'd be able to fire rapidly, and especially with the bolt, with the forward pressure holding the gun, you can cycle the bolt pretty rapidly. But what you would have to do is, is get yourself a high scope mount or a high set of iron sights. This is a Ruger 1022 integrally suppressed. The issue you have here is the suppressor tube goes all the way from the receiver to the end of the barrel. So any overhand grip puts your hand on a hot surface. So that CQB technique would not work on this one. Here we got a Marlin camp carbine integrally suppressed 45 caliber. This one you have the same issue. This one is hard to utilize even with a regular grip because you put your hand on the suppressor. So this one would call for special techniques. You'd have to hold the bottom here. What I found is the neoprene covers on the suppressors don't do a good job and they can get too hot too quickly and they don't really add much to, you know, use, utilize the weapon. If you're only going to fire four or five rounds, the Nomex covers help. If you're going to fire more than that, they're not going to prevent the heat. So you can see with integrally suppressed weapons, you're not going to have a hand service to use any technique up here. So what we kind of did to summarize our thoughts, the overhand forehand gripping technique that's utilized in a lot of these uh, newer videos and training schools, it is a limited application technique for special purposes. Therefore, in our opinion, you should learn and commit to muscle memory a general purpose technique where you're utilizing a bottom grip. That way you will automatically be able to assume position and control rapidly 98% of the weapons out there. The overhand grip technique should be used in situations where it gives you an advantage. But what you're going to have to do is think in terms of two things. If you're patrolling with a gun, can you carry your gun in this position for a long period of time? Can you carry this gun around all day? If you don't have a three-point sling on, you're committed to do that because if you're carrying your gun, you have to assume the hand position while you're going into, into firing position. So that's another step in the process. If you're in a scenario where you're going to assault a building, do a building entry, then you're going to be starting from ready position, then assuming the overhand grip would not be an issue because you could think about what you're doing ahead of time, get the grip situated and get going. So that's a few of our thoughts on the subject and we welcome your comments, feedback, tell us what you think. And we'll see you on the next episode.